everything God ever revealed to mankind is recorded in the Bible. The Bible is the source and the only source of infallible information from God. It's all recorded in this one book. But in a sense, it's actually not a book. It's a library of books, lots of books, books written over a long period of time by a lot of different authors to different people for different purposes, uh, all put together. So it's, it's a library of books, but in another sense, it is a book. It's one book. It's one unified message. And so it'll, it's helpful when you're interpreting the Bible to understand the different parts of it and how it's put together, why it's put together in the way that it's put together. And the most basic division in the Bible is Old Testament and New Testament. The word testament means covenant. God had one covenant with his people, and then he made a new covenant. And one is before the time of Jesus, the other is after the time of Jesus. So before the cross, that's Old Testament. After the cross, New Testament. And here's a little diagram that can give you kind of an idea here. The, the Old Testament, written over a period of a thousand years from the time that Moses wrote the first five books, and um, and then you have various different prophets who came and wrote the rest all the way until the last one, Malachi. That's the latest prophet, 400 B.C. Um, during this roughly thousand-year period, the Old Testament was written. Now, after 400 B.C., there's 400 years between that and Jesus. So they call these the 400 silent years, where there's no prophecy. Um, but the Old Testament covers the material from the creation all the way up to 400 B.C. Then you have the silent years, then Jesus comes along, he trains the 12 apostles, his 12 men, and um, he lives his life, he dies, rises from the dead, ascends into heaven, and then after that, uh, he sends the 12 out to, to preach his message and to write it down. And they start writing it down around 50 AD, and they write the various books of the New Testament, the message of Jesus, uh, from 50 to about 100 AD, uh, a little before then, so around 50 years this 50-year period, we get the New Testament. All right, so if we zero in just on the Old Testament, the Old Testament has three sections, the Law, the Prophets, and the Writings. Now, that's in the Hebrew Old Testament. Actually, in the English, in our English Bibles, we've kind of changed the order of the books around and created sort of a fourth category that is typically known as the historical books. Uh, there's some of these prophets that... Uh, most of the book is just history, and we have an eye for that in our culture. We like history. We like just history for the sake of history, just for the sake of keeping track of what happened. Uh, but but the Bible writers, they didn't really write history just to keep track of what happened. They wrote it to instruct the people about God and how to live uh, before God. So, so there's no reason to divide those history books out as if they're not part of the prophet's uh, so I think we should stick with the this just these three categories, the Law, the Prophets, and the Writings. And one of the reasons I think that is because that's the way Jesus thought about it. In Luke 24, when Jesus was on the road to Emmaus after the resurrection, he's talking to those guys and, and, and telling them about how the whole Old Testament pointed to him. And look at how he describes the the whole Old Testament. He says, this is what... I told you while I was still with you, everything must be fulfilled that was written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms. Now, the Psalms, that was an alternate way of referring to the third category, the writings. So, law, prophets, writings, or law, prophets, Psalms. Three categories, that's the way Jesus thought about it, and um, and I think that's a good way to think of it. So, so for the purposes of this course, I'm going to talk about the books of the Bible in the order that they appear in the Hebrew. Um, and, and I think there's a value to that because there's meaning, there's significance of the, of the order of things. You know, if you write a paper or a book, it matters which chapter comes in which place in the introduction and the conclusion and all that. You want it all in order uh, because that's part of the meaning. And I think it's the same with the books of the Bible. The way they were put together, there's some um, some significance in the order. So, um, uh, and, and I'll just give you an example, one quick example of that is the book of Ruth. You know, a lot of people have wondered, what is the purpose of the book of Ruth? Um, in, the, in the English Bible, it's just considered one of the historical books. But in the Hebrew Bible, Ruth comes right after Proverbs, which is interesting because Proverbs ends with chapter 31, that section about the virtuous woman, right? And, um, and then and, and that, that phrase, the virtuous woman, 
You know, there's, that's only applied to one woman in the entire Old Testament. Of all the amazing women all through the Old Testament, only one of them is ever called by that phrase, and it is Ruth. So, uh, so it's significant that Ruth comes right after Proverbs. The Proverbs ends with this section, here's the virtuous woman, and then a book saying, let me give you an example of this virtuous woman, Ruth. So, so that's just an illustration of how sometimes the meaning can, can be affected by the order. All right, so first category, the law. Uh, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. Now that doesn't change. English Bible, Hebrew Bible, that's, that stays the same. And it's always at the beginning. That's fundamental, it's foundational to the whole, uh, the rest of the Bible. And so uh, that stays the same. All five books written by Moses. Um, and we'll go into each one of those books in later videos in detail. It's called the law because the law was revealed to Moses, first revealed by God to Moses in this section. So Genesis is kind of the beginnings. Um, Exodus is the story of, of uh, the beginning of Israel. Uh, well, that starts in Genesis and then Exodus. But the rest of it is all the law, the giving of the law and the explanation of the law, the commentary on the law. This is how we are to live. This is what God requires us. These are the stipulations of the covenant that God has made with us. Um, and our end of it, how we can show loyalty to God. So, so that's the law. Next is the prophets, Joshua, Judges, um, and then Samuel. Um, in, in the English Bible, it's First and Second Samuel and First and Second Kings. In the original, that was just one book. The, the only reason there's First and Second is because when 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 they translated the Hebrew into Greek, and there were a lot more letters, and it was just took up more space. Uh, it was kind of unwieldy to have a giant scroll that big to have such a, a big book. So they just cut it in half right down the middle. Um, no real rhyme or reason to where they cut it, just kind of in the middle. And so that's how we got first and second Samuel and Kings and Chronicles. But in the, in the original, those were just one single book. So you got Joshua, Judges, Samuel, Kings, Isaiah, Jeremiah, Ezekiel. And then the, I love this, the 12. Um, in, instead of listing out all the minor prophets, there's 12 of them. Uh, Hosea, Joel, Amos, Obadiah, Jonah, Micah, Nahum, Habakkuk, Zephaniah, Haggai, Zechariah, Malachi. All those, it's it's nice if you were a little Hebrew kid and going through uh, Sabbath school or whatever, uh, and you had to memorize the books of the Bible. You didn't have to memorize all 12 of those. They just called them the 12. And they grouped them together. And, I, and part of the reason for that is they do have a, a, a somewhat of a unified message. Uh, and they kind of depend on one another. So, so the, those fit together. And the last category is the writings, or sometimes the other writings. And this just refers to the rest of the books. Uh, Chronicles, again, one book, Chronicles. And then what we typically refer to as the wisdom literature. Psalms, Job, Proverbs. Ruth is typically called a historical book, not wisdom. But then Song of Songs, Ecclesiastes, Lamentations. All those, except for Ruth, are typically known as the wisdom books. Um, and then you have Esther. And Daniel, and that makes sense that they would go together, uh, living uh, outside of the land of Israel during the time of exile. Um, uh, what is that like, and what does God uh, call His people to do? And then, and then Ezra and Nehemiah—that's when they come back uh, from the exile. And that again, that's one book in the Hebrew. We've divided it into two in English. So that's basic rundown on the structure of the Old Testament.